Hi everybody, Logan here. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I'm sitting in the observatory at the moment waiting for it to get dark because tonight I'm going to be imaging Messier 20, also known as the Trifid Nebula or the Trifid Nebula. Uh, Trifid Nebula is probably the most correct because it is referring to the, the three lobes um, of the emission nebula as it's divided by the, the dark nebula component. Um, but I kind of like Trifid Nebula as well because uh, it sounds a bit more... Um, tonight I'm going to be capturing just HA uh, data because we have got a very bright moon, it's about an 80-90% or 90 moon uh, and Messier 20 is pretty close to the moon so I, I don't know how that's going to go uh, but it's the first night where I've had, where it's clear all night unfortunately I can only go till about midnight because it's a work day and I've got to go to work tomorrow um, but uh, yeah, I'm hoping because it gets dark here at about 7 p.m., I could image till close to midnight. So I'm hoping to be able to at least keep maybe four or five hours of data to add what I've already captured so far. So I have been capturing some LRGB over the last um, two or three weeks. Uh, but again, it's just been an hour here, an hour there. Um, so it's been quite a slow process. Uh, I really do, I like Messier 20 because it's got those three components that you can image in the one nebula. So it's got the nice bright uh, red pink uh, emission nebula and then you've got the blue reflection nebula around the outside and then you've got the dark nebula which is dividing it up into the three, the three lobes or the three lobed look. So um, yeah, we'll see how we get on tonight. Um, as I said, waiting for it to get dark and um, I think it's time for a telescope set up montage. Okay, so we're in Pixon site and uh, I probably collected about 13 hours or so of data over the last two or three weeks uh, on the target. Now um, this is what the HA looked like. Um, here's the luminance and that was the red filter. These are the beta filters by the way, um, oh, apart from the HA which is not long, um, 7 nanometer narrowband filter. This is the green which um, picks up a lot of the um, outer reflection nebulosity part and the blue which uh, similarly picks up all that um, blue nebulosity. Now the HA was primarily there to try and pick up a lot of this other nebulosity that's um, sitting around um, outside of the, the nebula. I In my final image I ended up um, cropping uh, quite a bit of this out and I'll tell you why later but some of it's still in there so um, it was useful from that point of view. Um, I did try and combine the HA and the red together, didn't do a great job, the HA really dominated. Um, in the end I think I didn't actually use this HA and red combined version. What I did was I did an HA RGB version here which again didn't look so great when it came to the Trifid Nebula did it, but it did pick up this red nebulosity here. What I did was I did a starless version 
um, and I know this looks terrible because it's not really cleaned up. I didn't actually keep the final version that I did, but this is the stylus version. Cleaned it up um, so that it was primarily keeping this red uh, hydrogen signal here, which I combined into the final image in Photoshop and didn't worry about this part of the image. The RGB combination came out initially like this, this is before I've processed it with curves and, and saturation etc but wasn't a bad uh, image just as a straight combination um, and uh, you can see the blue reflection nebula out here I quite like the way the star colors were coming out. Um, now this was uh, a version I ended up with and as you can see I have um, got the hydrogen over here uh, combined in from the HA filter and this is primarily the um, LRGB uh, combination and one thing that um, I noticed when I sort of zoomed in here because I'm dealing with an 840 millimeter focal length some of the details sort of broke up a little bit here as you zoom in the stars get to get a little bit square and this is not quite so clear and I really wanted to sort of make a bit more clear this area where th this is a pillar of um, a gas cloud and there's this little um, spiky little thing coming out here which is a jet um, which they reckon is coming from a star that's uh, buried within all this dark cloud which we can't see. So um, about this time last year I actually uh, had taken uh, an image of the Trifford Nebula using my 10 inch med um, SCT. Now it has a focal length of 2500 millimeters so obviously much more zoomed in. So whilst it could pick up some nice detail of the emission uh, part of the uh, Trifford Nebula and also the dark nebula, it didn't. I couldn't get all of the reflection nebula in the frame. So I thought well why not combine these two images oops we'll just zoom that one out to there combine these two images now um, I was trying to register this with uh, this image I think they were too vastly different when it came to their um, focal lengths so I decided in the end to crop the one that I had um, crop this one uh, this one up here crop it down a bit so that they got a little bit closer to see if I could register them now I'm not sure if this is going to work I'll try and show you what I did this sometimes works it sometimes doesn't but um, I had this as the reference frame and I had this one uh, in this area as a target images target image sorry and um, I just dragged it across like this a little triangle and um, see if it works it's, yep and that worked and what I ended up with was this image which was now um, registered with this one and also about if we just get these in the right size here these would two these two would now uh, if I could combine them would uh, line up and I quite like the fact that this had more detail I thought from the um, dark nebula and also I think made this look area look a little bit cleaner so I went into Photoshop and combined the two images and um, this is the final image I came up with <laughs>